So this will be the start of a new series of videos as we go through the design process of Avatar The Way of Water as told in the art book for the movie. Before we start, let's go over the three teams put together and tasked with coming up with the overall design for not just this movie, but the other sequels as well. And that would be Dylan Cole leading the Pandora design team, tasked with coming up with the look for all the various regions, clans, and creatures of Pandora. Next is Ben Proctor, leading the RDA design team that will be in charge of coming up with the look for every human structure, vehicle, and weapon. And lastly, we have Deborah Scott leading the costume team, which will be responsible for designing the look for the characters from costumes to hair and makeup. Each of them had specific breakthroughs that they used as a springboard to help them accomplish the rest of their respective designs for the movie. In this first video, we will be covering the biggest hurdle for Dylan Cole and the Pandora design team, which was coming up with the final look for the Metcaina's Reef Village. So let's read through the passage on the design process for the Reef Village. Dylan Cole says the process started, as always, with a lot of exploration, because the Reef Village would be a primary location for the Solis and the Metcaina. Cameron wanted to see an organic functionality to the connected homes, whether they were familial huts or community spaces for the clan families to congregate. Initially attempting an orbital approach to connecting the suspended walkways between the homes, Cole says Cameron hated the aesthetic and teased that they were rings of Saturn walkways. He wanted the exact opposite where it was just sort of tensile structures between objects. So that led to a lot of concepts, like a study by concept artist John Park, which was an early tensile idea. We were all doing different designs, but that particular concept was progressing somewhere also with our home visual language, which were these wasp nest type structures with tensile connections. Around the same time, in 2014, Cole says concept artist David Levy did beautiful studies that were very loose and suggestive, but much more in the zone of what Cameron was looking for visually and functionally. That was followed up by several studies done by Park that pushed some ornamentation options as well as a team doing arts and craft explorations with fabrics, wire, pantyhose, and other tactile materials to figure out the homes. Cameron immediately noted that the home should have more of an organic resemblance to baskets or swallow's nests. They're enclosed woven things, Cole remembers Cameron explaining. They continued to take studies in that direction, but Cole says they were ultimately too complicated, yet Cameron found elements within those designs that helped them dial in a far simpler visual language. Cole says it wasn't until 2017 that they finally started to solidify how the home structures would be presented. Among many other design assignments, Cole says that in the interim, they continued to tweak different elements with varying degrees of success, and then there was a breakthrough. Ultimately, we realized that we were thinking of homes and walkways as two separate things, Cole details. What really cracked the code for us was thinking of them as the same thing where the walkway is part of the home structure. It all flows together. We still needed big walkways, but began thinking of them as units, which were illustrated in black and white sketches that designers Jonathan Bach and John Park were doing, and that really solved it. Cameron was pleased with the integration, but needed places to stage the characters throughout the village for key story beats. Cole admits he was looking at designing the community to find an overall cohesive look and feel, but Jim was just like, no, where's my set? Where's my walkway? Where's my house? I need to shoot scenes. He says of discovering the focus adjustment, I'm still trying to figure out what a reef village is, not what a set is. Having finally moved closer to what Cameron envisioned, Cole says they continued to perfect individual homes, like the Sully home, 
to create distinctive standing sets for Cameron to block and frame scenes around. The Sully's home needed a porch because we had lots of people in front of it, Cole details. We needed a back door, so the Sully's home ended up going through its own evolution. And that was also one where we did a bespoke proxy build for stage. It was going from concept art to gravity sketch to figuring out the whole flow of this thing. He says it prompted him to seek the skills of the set designers that were already working with Ben Proctor's team. Knowing we were building this thing and had to get serious about it, we enlisted set designers to translate the concept art and models to buildable designs. Cole details, Kevin Liu did some beautiful work figuring out the curves and then that was interpreted and built by Ed Simon for our practical capture set. They did a beautiful job making it real. Cole says he finally knew they had achieved Cameron's vision for the refillage when after five years, it was used by Cameron to shoot a scene for the movie. I was literally teary because I was like, oh my god, we have the refillage done. I mean, it's never done, but this was our most difficult set to engineer, and we did it, and then turned it over to Weta FX. So that was just our first of many videos going through the design process for Avatar The Way of Water. Hope you enjoyed the video. As always, thank you for watching, and I'll catch you all in the next video.